When you've never done something in your life before and you're doing it for the very first time, here's a very simple and effective way that you can quickly find out exactly what you need to do in order to achieve it. The best way that I know how to accomplish something is through reverse engineering the process. You see, I like this approach because it does not solely depend on someone formally taking you under their wing. You know, although that's the most ideal way to do it, the truth is you and I are not always going to have the luxury of having an ideal mentor at our disposal, right? We're not going to do it. Reverse engineering allows you to create virtual mentors out of virtually anybody that you identify is getting the kind of results that you want. Now, you may have heard of this phrase, success leaves clues, or you may have heard it this way, success leaves a trail. What this means is whatever it is that you want to do, chances are pretty good that someone else has probably already accomplished it, or at least they've achieved something similar, right? Scriptures already tell us that there is absolutely nothing new under the sun. So this is what we know. And granted, there are special cases where this rule of thumb certainly doesn't apply to the letter. But we can all agree that this idea or concept of reverse engineering, um, the, the essence of it or the wisdom behind it is always true. Reverse engineering is simply a process of discovering the most important principles and pathways that lead us directly to our desired outcomes, starting from the end result that we want and then working our way backward to where we are. Tim Ferriss, uh, the best-selling author of The 4-Hour Workweek, The 4-Hour Body, and most recently The 4-Hour Chef, has gotten this concept of reverse engineering down to a science. In fact, in his last book, The 4-Hour Chef, uh, he actually uh, goes into a very special type of reverse engineering called meta-learning. In general, here's how you reverse engineer anything that you want to accomplish. Number one, the first thing you want to do is get a clear picture of what it is you want to accomplish. You must establish your desired outcome. Number two, you've got to identify a real or virtual mentor that has repeatedly gotten the kind of success that you want. Step number three, study and then modif uh, model their approach. And then step number four, modify your approach until you get what you want. Now, in this process, if you want to accelerate your success, I recommend you use Tim Ferriss' DS3 framework. You can find out more about this specifically in his book, The 4-Hour Chef. But remember, work backward from the end result that you want to where you are starting from. Okay, here's Tim Ferriss' formula. The D stands for deconstruction. Break down your desired outcome in its most basic moving parts. The basic objective here is to identify what actually goes into making your ambition successful. That's deconstruction. Now, the first S stands for selection. This is where you establish the first 20 or the most important 20% that gives you the 80 or 90% of the results you want. Everything that you want to accomplish always can be broken down to the least amount of moving parts. That's what you want to do. It's called blocking. Here is where you want to uh, selectively block out all of the moving parts into their essence. Okay, the essence of the 20%. That's selection. The second S is sequencing. This is where you put the most important building blocks into the right order of learning, the right sequence. Here is where you put the most basic building blocks into their right order of learning. This is key. In sequencing, you want to always begin with elements that will yield you small, quick wins on the front end. And the reason why you want to do this is so that you build what I call winner's momentum. Uh, this ensures that you stay compliant to the process. The most common reason why people fail is not because they lack the ability to do something, but simply they lack the consistency in complying to the process. You have a better chance of winning when you set yourself up to win first. That's sequencing, okay? Putting things in the right order of learning. Now, the last S that Tim talks about is called stakes. Here is where you kickstart your commitment and you bake in personal motivation in the process. Whenever you want to accomplish anything, especially if you've never done it before, what ensures your compliance to the process over the long run will be not uh, what, what you stand to gain. It's not the, the payoff, 
but actually what you have to lose. As humans, personal motivation is most sustainable when the threat of losing something we care about is constant and immediate. When perceived pain for not doing something is more painful than actually doing something, that's when we're motivated to take action, period. That's how we are as humans. Pain motivates us to move the most. It's that simple. Now, when it comes to accomplishing your desired outcome, make sure that you make the stakes high enough, painful enough, that it motivates you to stay the course. You got it? The real secret to accomplishing anything significant, especially stuff that you've never done before, is reverse engineering the process. Uncovering the blueprint, making sure that you make the stakes high enough that, that they motivate you to take consistent, committed action, and then comply to that blueprint until you get what you want. Got it? When you faithfully do this, my friend, you will not have to worry about finding success because success will have its uncanny way of finding you. When you reverse engineer it, that's what happens. Well, at least most of the time. All right. Well, guys, I hope that what I just shared serves you well. Go out and apply it, test it. And I'm really interested to find out how reverse engineering works for you. Okay, so make sure you come back and share in the community. Share with the community. Uh, comment on the blog here, whatever it is. But take action, guys. And remember, in all that you do, finish well. I'll talk to you next time.